What a time to be an Italian tennis fan right now. Another Italian has a massive result at Indian Wells, this time knocking out the world number one, Novak Djokovic. And here we go, that Italian is not Yannick Sinner, it is Luca Nardi. And he's stunned his boyhood idol and top-seeded Novak Djokovic with a 6-4, 3-6, 6-3 win in the third round of the BNP Paribas Open on Monday night. Nardi, who's ranked number 123 in the world, closed out his huge upset over the number one player uh, with an ace. The 20-year-old from Italy dropped his racket and brought his hand to his face almost in disbelief before greeting Djokovic at the net. And listen, there is so much to talk about in this match. Of course, it is a big shock and a surprise. We know Djokovic has not been playing too much tennis. Uh, and this is his first event since the Australian Open. Um, the first match, he wasn't great. He got through it and showed enough level to win. This one wasn't his best. I feel he was um, not great off his serve. He made too many unforced errors, but you can't take anything away from the Luca Nardi performance. This guy is only 20 years old and he seriously is one for the future. We've got Sinner, we've got Paolini on the women's who's doing great at the moment. And Luca Nardi, I think, is a better prospect than what Lorenzo Massetti is right now. Um, I've been a really big fan watching him on the Challengers. He's now broken into the ATP circuit, and I think he's here to stay. Great on the clay, good on the hard courts, and he's going to be certainly very dangerous in every event this year. Uh, let's move on through the tweets. And this first one, which is crazy, is Luca Nardi is the third player in history ranked outside the top 100 to defeat Novak Djokovic as number one player after Vesely in Dubai and Juan Martin Del Potro in the Olympics. These things do not happen often at all. And I mean, this one just, just highlights it because this shows Djokovic's worst defeats in Masters and Grand Slams. With Djokovic, like the one against Vesely in Dubai, it can happen sometimes in the smaller events. Um, you'd expect him not to be so up for it. But one thing you can always rely on with Novak Djokovic is he produces his best tennis uh, when there's a Masters at stake or a Grand Slam. And this is why it's so shocking because in the history, he's only really lost five like big, big matches where you'd, ex you'd expect him to easily win. And this is one of them. So you've got Luca Nardi, Indian Wells, uh, Kevin Anderson in 2008 in Miami, Dennis Is Istamin in Australian Open 2017, Tara Daniel, that was also Indian Wells, and Julian Benito, Indian Wells 2006. So the theme is Indian Wells, he doesn't perform too well at. Uh, despite that, he has won it five times in the past. Federer is the only player who has won Indian Wells more than him, but he's not won it for several years now. And there's something about the conditions what doesn't suit him. And if any event there is to pull a surprise, as you can see here, it's happened three times now at Indian Wells. Uh, moving on to the next one. This is Djokovic speaking after his defeat to Nardi. And this is what he had to say. He said, no titles this year. That's not something I'm used to. I was starting the season most of my career with a Grand Slam, of course, the Australian Open, uh, Dubai or any tournament. It's fine. It's part of the sport. You just have to accept it. And this is why I'm asking you guys this question right now. It's very rare we've got to march without Djokovic winning a title. We know we have the Olympics as a special event this year. We know he's never won the Olympics and it's something he would love to do for Serbia. But do you think we're going to see him win any titles until the Olympics? Do you think he's not going to win any titles this year? Do you think he's got a chance in the Olympics? Is this the beginning of the end of Djokovic? Are we getting too ahead of ourselves? Is it just he's not very good at Indian Wells? He was unlucky playing against an informed Yannick Sinner at the Australian Open. I feel like there is a lot of different takes you can have with this one. And I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say on where we see Novak Djokovic at. My assessment is I wouldn't get too worried as a Djokovic fan. I think he will be okay. I would expect him to still pick up a big title this year. Um, but I don't think he's going to win a Grand Slam. I really don't. I don't think he's going to win a Grand Slam. I think at the very best he'll win a Masters event. Uh, but I could certainly be wrong. I've been wrong many times before on Novak Djokovic. And 
I think we are seeing him pull out some more inconsistent results. That is my prediction. Not based off this one. I think we're going to see this be a little bit of a trend of 2024. There's just so many great players coming through. Luka Nardi is just one of, one of many. I mean, when you look at Sina and Alcalaz and what they can produce, I think it's really tough for Djokovic. If, if he can get through to these semi-finals and finals, he's going to have to play them guys. But to get there, you've got a lot of tough, tough young players who I think can be super dangerous. A lot more dangerous than the likes of Tsitsipas, Zverev and that generation. That's my opinion anyway. Uh, moving on to the next one. It's interesting because he doesn't do very well against Italians. Against non-Italians since the start of 2023. He's 62 wins, 5 losses. Against Italians though, 2 wins, 5 losses. And he really does struggle with Italian tennis players. And you can read here, this is 5 of his last 9 losses. Uh, were against Italian players. And you've got Massetti at Monte Carlo. You've got Sinner, ATP Finals. Sinner, Davis Cup. Sinner, Australian Open. And now, Luca Nardi. Uh, Mamma mia, we've got here. Uh, it seems like Djokovic will want to avoid the Italians as much as he can. And if he is to play Rome this year, you know there's going to be extra Italians there with wild cards and, and lucky losers, which... In history, this is now the first time he's ever lost to a lucky loser. You've got to remember, Luca Nardi lost in the qualifying, got through as a lucky loser, and then defeated Novak Djokovic. These things do not happen. It is extremely rare, and you never know what that means for Novak Djokovic. I still think he will be competitive. I still think he is one of the best players in the world. I wouldn't down tools too much and be too negative with him. But we could see a drop-off slightly this year. And we're not going to maybe see the best level we've seen over the other years. We've been spoiled uh, to watch such great tennis from Djokovic. And I think it's going to be difficult for him to maintain that level. The next one up is a very controversial topic. And this is the whole issue with the umpire. I can't show the video, but I'm sure you can watch it on Twitter uh, or on online on some websites. But what happened was this. So Nardi thought Novak serve was out. So he kind of stopped after making the return. He didn't make any noise. So the umpire saying the point was still in play. Novak complaining saying he stopped. Just because he stopped doesn't mean the point stops. Novak, what are you talking about? He literally stopped and that's it. He confused me completely. I stopped as well. How can you not make that judgment? Are you kidding me or what? Nardi gets the game and it was an important game because Nardi took the first set. Djokovic went up a break early in the second and this was for Nardi to break back. Nardi wasn't sure if it was a double fault. He played, he stopped, hit the ball back and then continued to play as it wasn't called out and Djokovic just stood at the net and watched. For me, I am surprised someone of Djokovic's experience did something like this and there's people I've seen on, on social media saying that Djokovic it was hindrance it was he didn't say anything Luca Nardi there wasn't an, a signal to say it's out he just stopped you're perfectly allowed to do that I didn't see any issue in it altogether and I think this was not a good look for Djokovic and it seemed to me he was trying to unsettle Luca Nardi um, and maybe a little bit frustrated with the fact that he's dropped the first set and he was disappointed in himself that he just stopped I blame Djokovic fully for this. He shouldn't have stopped. And it's his fault why he dropped the game. Let me know what you guys think. Of course, it is going to be a very controversial one. Interesting to hear what Ben has to say as well. Next tweet is worth noting. Luca Nardi won Les Petites as uh, in 2017 with both Alcaraz and Runa in the draw. So... This guy comes from, from some kind of pedigree. We know Alcaraz and Runa, Runa were brilliant as young players and they did extremely well in this tournament in France. I remember back in the day, this was the one where we saw the sort of Gasquet, Nadal, I think 2000, I don't even know what year, early 2000s. Um, so this is a very prestigious tournament for young tennis players. Alcaraz did well there, but so did Luca Nardi and we need to factor that in. I've also seen an image from 2017 with... Uh, I think it was Luca Nardi on Alcaraz's back. So they do know each other. They've played with each other for many years. And now we're seeing the fruits of all of his all of his hard labour. And Luca Nardi has announced himself on the tour. 
and I think he's here to stay, and I think he's going to be very dangerous in a lot of events. So, brilliant result for Luke Canardi. It is really big, and it's great to see that he's uh, followed up his success as a young player. What did he have to say? So, Luke Canardi, he said, I think before this night, no one knew me. I hope now the crowd enjoyed the game. I'm super happy with this one. Four weeks ago, you lost to 462 in the world. You've just beaten world number one. How did you keep your nerve? He was asked. Uh, I don't know, man. Really, I don't know. I think this is a miracle. I'm a 20-year-old guy ranked 100 in the world beating Novak. It's crazy. He simply could not believe it at all. He was then asked uh, in the press conference, uh, what do you think about Tommy Paul? Are you ready for that? And he was like, Tommy Paul? He's confused completely. Didn't even realise who he was playing because I feel like what happens is you usually look at the draw, you see you've got Djokovic or a Medvedev or an Adkaraz and then you don't really look beyond that. And this is what Luca did. He wasn't looking beyond Novak Djokovic because I don't think deep down he thought there was a a high chance he was going to win there. I mean, nobody ever beats Djokovic at these big events and Luca did it and now he gets to play Tommy Paul and I'm hoping we get an epic match yet again. I'd love to see Luca continue this great run and beat Tommy Paul. Saying that though, historically, there is statistics that prove this. When you beat a big free player as a bit of a shock, what happens is you then lose the next match. So I don't want to wish that on him, but it is something that's happened in the past hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, the final one, bit of a comical one, and this is Djokovic and the Dow heading home together from Indian Wells. We saw all the hype about how this image blew up the internet and it started the excitement of, oh, they're both at Indian Wells. Are they going to do so well together? It turns out Rafa and the Dow didn't even play and Djokovic went out early. So... This is them both on a flight home early and the two goats wasn't for them in 2024 at Indian Wells. But there we go. That is my assessment. That's my roundup. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Of course, massive shock Novak Djokovic losing so early in Indian Wells. It means we don't get to see a Yannick Sinner Djokovic final. But you never know. We could get something even bigger for Italy and that is a Luca Nardi Sinner final. Um, long way to go for Luca, of course. He's got Tommy Paul next. And I don't think it's going to be easy. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you soon.